A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. <laughs> Yellow mathematicians, welcome back to the video! Last time round we have done a nice little elementary exercise, elementary geometry. Construct a tangent to a circle. The exercise wasn't too hard, but it also wasn't too easy. It was just right in between. It's just the perfect content for YouTube and you really enjoyed it and you wanted more elementary geometry and this is what we are going to do today. The last exercise is always part of the exams I have in 8th grade where we talk about circles and constructions and this really differentiates the not so good students from the really good students. This is like the threshold exercise in my exams to really get the best grade possible. If you can solve something like this, you just can get the best grade possible. You have to think a bit further than the regular stuff that we do in class. So this is like the thing I really want to have in my exams at all times. So it's really hard to get the best grade possible in my exams to be honest. Um, yeah, it just is what it is. And there's also something of that sort I do in seventh grade where we talk about the construction of quadrilaterals, quadrilaterals, the things with the four corners and the four edges and the four vertices and the four what, whatever the fuck, you know what I mean, okay? Things like squares and rectangles and shit like that. And I always put an exercise in my exams which kind of breaks the rules for German mathematics at schools because it's, it's, it's not in the regular curriculum. Construct a square using only straight edge and compass and it might sound easy at first But you have to think a tiny little bit about it and if you think it's just seventh grade then Yeah, it's actually pretty hard for them And it's the threshold exercise in my exams and I invite you to try it out for yourself today I bet you can't construct a square using just straight edge and compass Try it out for yourself and then keep watching the video for the solution and now we are going to dive right in ドメン。おお、おはようございます、おぱいちゃん。おお。おちんちんが大好きなんだよ。おたきます。おおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおお
on the side length by using our compass. And this is exactly what we are going to do. We are going to create a perpendicular on this side length. But the thing is, if we were just to put a perpendicular here in a bisector, then it's on half of that thing. So we are going to double our side length here at first. And then we are going to go ahead and put our bisector in. Give me a second. This is going to take just a tiny little second to set up. Okay, perfect. So we are going to extend this whole thing. There was a bit of a fail. Okay, perfect. So we are going to double our side length. This is something you can do in elementary or Euclidean geometry. And I want you guys to note that we don't need to mark any point here right now. This is not something that we need because um, we are going to half our side length in the process anyways. So we can extend our side length now. This right here is a fixed point. We can put it over here until we meet the mark at our circle arc, you could say. Okay, um, how would you bisect that side? That's actually fairly easy using our compass. All we need to do is we need to set our compass more than half of the side length here. Um, and also the thing that we need to do is we need to fix our length in place. This is one of the only things that we really need to take care of. And um, if you don't fix it in place, you're not going to get your regular bisector. Then you're going to have an arbitrary point lying um, somewhere on the line. So this right here should be sufficient. We are going to put one on top and at the bottom. Now we are going to drag our compass over here. And now I'm messing stuff up a tiny little bit. It's harder than it looks um, to do it on a blackboard here if you just have things like these at hand. Um, I'm going to extend this just a tiny little bit. It's going to be a tiny little bit inaccurate anyways. And from this point onwards, we have successfully constructed ourselves our bisector, which is also in a 90 degree angle to our original side. I'm just going to make this arbitrarily long. We don't care about that. And now we are basically done. Think back to what a square is. The side length here must be exactly the same length as this one. So. We kind of need to extend this side length in such a way that it is the same length as this one right here. How would you do that? I mean, you can't measure stuff. You just have a random arbitrary straight edge. So we can start measuring things we don't know about units. So we need to make use of our compass yet again, which, which is fairly easy. We are just going to go through the same procedure yet again. So what we are going to do is we are going to set our, um, our compass to be the same length as our side length here. And then we are just going to simply draw. I'm so sorry for the floating blackboard. This is always so annoying. I have no idea what, what happened here and why it's out of, um, out of equilibrium. But now I have set my compass to be the length that I need. And I'm going to put my compass right in here on this point. And now I'm going to extend my line segment just like before. And then we are already nearly good to go because you can now notice one very important thing in this construction. And the cool thing about the square is actually, see, we have extended it to equal side lengths. The cool thing about the square is that if we were to put a diagonal from one corner to the other, what you're going to notice is that we are going to have an isosceles triangle here. Meaning, if we were to also put our diagonal in, into here. I'm, I'm just going to make a very, very thin line just to demonstrate it. We can see that constructing a square is actually just a matter of constructing two isosceles triangles, which are also, no, they are just isosceles, I want to say um, equilateral, but they are isosceles right triangles, which are connected at the corners. They, basically just mirrored on this diagonal. And we can make use of this fact. The cool thing about triangles is that you can construct them fairly easily um, using four methods. One of the methods being if we know 
two side lengths and also the angle which is in between or another construction being we know three side lengths in total and we do that we know the distance between those two points which also makes up for the diagonal so we have one side length and we also know what the other two side lengths are going to be they are going to be equal and they are going to be the same length as the other ones so the only thing we need to do now is get a hold of our regular triangle construction like this Okay, okay, let us do this real quick. This is the first part and now here comes the second part and this right here connects to one point and if we now connect our corners we might end up if we are lucky with kind of a good square kind of trying my best here it's as mentioned before not as easy as it seems on camera especially when my blackboard um, is moving on its own at all times. I'm terribly sorry about that. There we go, better. But if you take a look at that, it's not even too shabby. Um, if I take a look at my little screen here, actually looks pretty good, <laughs> looks pretty good. Looks kind of like a square and this is a square, a square construction that you can use. Um, there, there are other ways to do so, obviously. Now if you take a look at the circle being inscribed for example inside of a square, a square is a so-called cyclic quadrilateral. Um, you can also notice that it's just four tangents being connected um, at the corners at a 90 degree angle. So what you can also do is you can construct a tension just like we did last time around. So meaning at first you're going to draw two chords into here. They are going to find themselves at the center if you put a bisector into here. And with this radius you can start constructing yourselves a tension like this. Okay, now we got one tension and now you can basically also go through the same construction that we got here or you're going to go through a triangle construction too. So you can also put triangles into here which connect at a 90 degree angle here because our diagonals also have a 90 degree angle here. There are several ways to go about constructions like this and the cool thing about this construction especially is you know what this side length must be, you know what this angle must be and since the longest side is um, opposite of the angle um, and we also know this side length we can make use of the S <laughs> construction. This is one that I have con um, shown here on YouTube too that the ASS triangle construction is actually a thing and then you are basically also done. This is also a very cool construction um, but it's a bit more sophisticated than this one but but I think both have their um, both have their reasons to live and to exist and you can tell me which one you prefer most. I actually prefer this one most because it's rather easy. It's something that uh, that seventh grade students also can get a grasp of and I think it's just a great exercise to have in exams to basically differentiate between the not so good students and the really good students and I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today and if you did why not make sure to subscribe to the channel and there are going to be three more elementary geometry videos if I'm not mistaken in the next time. So definitely look out for those. The next one is going to be about the golden ratio construction which is a really cool construction if you ask me it's especially constructing just roots in general and I think if I'm not mistaken all roots are constructible all square roots at, at least are constructible in Euclidean geometry because of Papa Pythagoras. It's a cool construction, you can already try it out for yourself to construct the golden ratio using straight edge and compass, but you should be excited for this video, it's, it's, a, it's a cool construction. But other than that, don't forget to check out Tuta Eva. it's a really cool app. I, uh, I really like the little interactive anime twist to the whole mathematics problem solving thing, so yeah, definitely make sure to try it out using the link down there at the top of the description. And this concludes today's video and I'm wishing you guys a fabulous day. See ya!